Hi guys, it's Vanessa from To The Brim and I am here today with something a little bit different. I usually do videos on candle making, pottery skills, small business, things like that. And today I thought I would come on here and do an Amazon haul for you guys uh, with items that I find helpful in managing my PCOS. If you don't know what PCOS is, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. And a lot of ladies are on the spectrum in some way or another. And the frustrating part about having polycystic ovarian syndrome is that it is sometimes hard to diagnose. I'm giving you my perspective of the experiences that I've had with PCOS and also from a nursing perspective, but I'm not a doctor. And if you have any symptoms, you need to go to your own doctor, have blood work done, see an endocrinologist and try to figure things out. My story was that when I was in junior high, I started getting, you know, little hairs here and there. My weight started to be a problem in 10th grade or so I was, and I'm like 5'2", so I'm pretty small. I was about 150 pounds. And so in 10th grade, I was a size 14 and I hadn't been that big before. You know, when I, I was never a skinny kid, um, my weight always fluctuated, but I just, it was very easy for me to gain weight after I got my period. And, uh, you know, junior, senior year, I lost a bunch of weight just by really, I think I had a growth spurt at the same time that I was just being a teenage girl and not eating a whole lot. But then as I got older, my facial hair got really bad. When I was in, I think my freshman year of college, I started having to shave uh, every single day. And then that turned into wearing thick makeup every day on my face and my neck because I was very self-conscious about it. At the same time, I was struggling with my weight anytime that I would go on you know a hormonal birth control or anything was out of sorts at all I would just pack on weight immediately and it wasn't until I was it was after my son was born my son was born when I was 29 and after he was born is really when I started to realize that I was having a lot harder time losing weight than I should have been having my facial hair was horrible. My menstrual cycle was regular, but really heavy, really clotty periods. And those just got worse. Eventually I saw a specialist and was prescribed a Mirena IUD, really against the recommendation of my endocrinologist who had sent me to this gynecologist. Uh, you know, she said, you really can't be on anything with hormones in it. It's just going to make things worse. It's going to make your weight worse. It's going to make your symptoms worse. And so I saw this guy, he was a specialist. I was like, okay, you know, uh, he put the Mirena IUD in. And I think at that point I was 168 pounds and within, you know, 15 months I was up to 193. And that was the only thing that I, I had done different. I was you know, a school nurse at the time. I was very active and I was still watching my diet the same as I always had. I was in karate. And so in the time that I was taking karate class, when I was getting a ton of aerobic exercise and cardio, uh, I was gaining all this weight. And really the only thing that I could attribute it to at the time was the hormones in the Mirena IUD. So then I started looking into it and I found that there are a lot of girls just like me who have problems with their weight and the facial hair and the PCOS and are, you know, struggle like that. And they had the same exact thing happen to them. There are people who can get an IUD that's, you know, it doesn't bother them because they don't have a hormone imbalance to begin with. And so the hormones in the Mirena don't affect them in the same way. But people that have PCOS, things are out of whack there are things that you can very easily trigger and it just causes this landslide of whatever it is, depression, anxiety, weight gain, uh, periods that are out of whack, things like that. And so I was able to finally have the IUD taken out. Nobody would take me seriously. My primary wouldn't take me seriously. The specialist that had put it in wouldn't take me seriously. He was actually on a medical leave at the time. And so I was, as a school nurse working with a girl who works in a doctor's office and she's like, I'm going to talk to somebody at work and see if one of the nurse practitioners can take it out. So I had it removed by somebody who wasn't even my own doctor. And the only time I ever saw her was to remove my IUD. I was 192.8 the day that I got the IUD taken out and I just continued to shed that weight 
right after I got that IUD out over the next you know year, I lost all that weight that I had gained with the IUD. So it was clearly the IUD. And so it's very frustrating and I understand that. And so there are a lot of products that I have recently gotten from Amazon or that I, I order frequently or regularly from Amazon that I find helpful. And I thought coming on here and talking a little bit about those things and sharing those things would be helpful to somebody. My way of eating is low carb because somebody with PCOS has usually, a lot of people with PCOS have insulin resistance, which means that they don't really process carbs properly. And you're gonna be one of those people that you can be on Weight Watchers where you can eat limitless fruit and you're gonna be like, I just gained five pounds. What in the hell is happening? It's just because the sugars, your body doesn't really process the carbohydrates in the same way that an average person with a normal metabolic rate or without PCOS is going to do. And so I have worked for years and years and years. I have an endocrinologist, I have a primary care physician, and as a nurse, I do a lot of just research on my own and have found that a low carb way of eating is really the best thing for somebody with PCOS. And there are people that don't ovulate until they cut the carbs out. And so I have a lot of items here for, you know, uh, whether it's protein shakes or menstrual products or a product for facial hair or supplements. And I hope that some of those will help you out. The first thing is when you're on a low carb diet, it is, I've been doing it for years. I went from 190 something to I'm 154. And, uh, you know, I've been this weight for a couple of years now because, but any of the times where I'm like, oh, I should be fine. I can start eating bread and I like start making homemade bread and I start eating Weetabix and grape nuts and, you know, whatever else it's, it is flips a switch within me and then I start the cravings again and then I'm like oh well I could just have a cookie and I can just have this and you know I'll weigh myself in two months and I've gained eight pounds because I, you you know if you have a problem with your hormones and your endocrine system there it's so fragile that one little thing can just throw it off and I have found that to be true for myself I've had it I've done it three different times where I'm like oh no I should be fine I can eat fruit I can eat oatmeal for breakfast I can do this I can do that and then I just gain weight from it so uh, I'm gonna show you two of the protein shakes that I use because you know hard-boiled eggs are kind of sickening if you eat them every single day so sometimes it's hard to figure out what can I eat for breakfast I've been eating a protein shake for breakfast for probably three years now, you know, sometimes I'll have eggs or sometimes I'll have leftovers from the night before. But these are two of the protein shakes that I use. I mix it with plain non-fat Greek yogurt. Sometimes I mix in, you know, a spoonful of peanut butter powder. Sometimes I put in a couple drops of extract of some sort, whether it's vanilla or banana, you can add cinnamon. You can add, you know, a handful, a small handful of blueberries or blackberries or something like that. I don't usually do that and I mix it with unsweetened almond milk, which is 30 calories per cup. And so these are the two that I'm using right now pretty frequently. It's the Sun Warrior Protein and I'm gonna show you the label. So you can see the carbohydrates, uh, three or four, depending if you use a scoop or a scoop and a half and one or two grams of fiber and you subtract the fiber. I hope that is in focus. We were getting uh, purely inspired protein, which they sold in a four pound container for a couple of years. And then we realized, I started realizing it was causing me stomach issues. I have an allergy to um, MCT oil and coconut oil and stuff like that. So I started having like weird reactions and we looked at the label and not only were there some different ingredients in it, but the carbohydrates were like 11. And that's really too high. You know, if you're wanting to stay between 20 and 30 carbs a day and you're using 11 of it just for the shake mix, it's kind of a waste and it gives you enough added sugars that it may trigger you to be like, mm, I'm going to get McDonald's on the way home. Another one, this is the first uh, one of this that I've tried and this does have coconut in it and it does not bother me. So it all depends, I guess, on the day. But this one has six carbs, but two are fiber. So you always subtract the fiber. And the other thing that I would suggest staying away from, there are some shake mix that have very few carbs, but if you look, they have sugar alcohols, Whether and, and it could be you know erythritol or something similar. Erythritol wrecks my guts. I will be bloated and farting, you know, diarrhea, it's, it's gurgling, like audibly gurgling. 
it's poison. So my suggestion is to try to find something that does not have erythritol in it. These are two good options. There's also a vanilla in this that I have gotten before. I have not gotten another fla flavor in the Vega yet, um, but if I do, I will update you guys. Another thing that, and I am linking all these items. They're not gonna be in the same order because I linked them while I was sitting on my couch drinking tea this morning and I'm just kind of working my way through the items here. But um, I just started using this because another thing when you have PCOS, you tend to have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, anxiety, you know, panic issues, your joints are sore, you have inflammation issues. And so I am trying to manage all of those things. I am on blood pressure meds. I am on a very, very low dose of cholesterol medications, but um I'm not on blood sugar medication anymore. For years, I was on 1,000 milligrams of metformin twice a day. It did help me lose weight. It made me feel like shit. Horrible stomach issues. And it's poison. It is horrible for you. And it was too much. Um, and, you know, once I realized I should be eating low carb, there are some people who can pull off taking metformin and eating low carb. I could not. My blood sugar would crash and I would feel like vomiting. There was one night I was at work and... I could not get my blood sugar up. I had taken my metformin and I was passing meds and it, it took me a couple hours to do my nighttime routine at work. And by the time I sat down to finally eat my dinner, it was like 10 o'clock. I was working three to 11 and my blood sugar was like 60 or something. And I get symptomatic at, you know, 70 ish. And then, so I'm 60. There was a girl working with me that had diabetes, had her monitor with me. I don't carry my monitor because I don't usually have to take my blood sugar. And she's like, okay, we'll have some gluco tabs. So I took some gluco tabs. We took it again in like a half an hour. Didn't go up. Ate a banana, drank some juice, did everything that I could think of to get my blood sugar up. And it just would not. I vomited. They almost called the ambulance. I had to sit at work until like one in the morning before I felt like I could drive. Came home, was curled up on a ball on the kitchen floor, like dry heaving. It was nasty. It was probably a good 12 hours. I probably should have gone to the hospital, but it's poison. And so if there's a way for you to manage, if you cut carbs out, if you eat low carb, then you do that for a while. There's really no need to be on metformin. In my opinion, in my opinion, my personal experience was your blood sugar is going to regulate and it is not going to be up and down and up and down and up and down. It's not going to be causing you to pack on weight and feel like shit and, and all this. Um, but so for inflammation, I do use turmeric and ginger. I've linked it or turmeric and curcumin. Uh, I kind of go back and forth between the two. I ran out and had to order more. So I don't have the bottle from the turmeric, but I did link it. And this Vital Proteins Collagen Peptides, I put in either the bottle of water that I use when I'm spinning or just put it in my shake. And this has very good reviews to help with your joints. I have bad hips genetically. Uh, and just, I'm 45 and I really up until last month wasn't exercising regularly. And so I think that this is going to be good for my joints and it's also good for your skin, hair and nails. And it's also joint support. So it has no flavor. I did notice when I put it in my shake though, it clumped up a little bit. It worked better in water. And another thing that I use my doctor, I don't like fish oil. So I am on like the teensiest little tiny cholesterol medication that she's most likely going to take me off of the next time that I go. But she has had me taking this krill oil. I don't like fish oil taste. I don't like burping it up. It makes me gag. So this actually smells like a vanilla cupcake. And I don't have a problem swallowing it. I'll show you what size they are. They're this big. You take one a day. You don't burp it up after. It doesn't have that gross taste. And this will help with your high cholesterol. Uh, also, I know somebody who sells a, I think it's called Escalate Coffee, and there are supplements and Xanthomax and a couple other things, and it's very, very expensive. And I was like, okay, it's appetite suppressant, it can help with your mood, things like that. And I thought, okay, I'm going to look into see what's in that stuff. And hops extract is one of the things that is in the Escalate tea. I think it's called Escalate, the Escalate coffee, you know, supplement kind of thing, Xanthomax. And so I looked into it and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to try the hops extract and see. And at the same time that I started taking this, I, a month ago, 
as a lot of people with PCOS and your hormones are going up and down, I'm perimenopausal, my anxiety was through the roof, it was really starting to impact my quality of life. And I was getting my parents' house ready to sell and it was just a really rough time for me. And I finally did go on a low dose of Zoloft. I was very worried because I have been on SSRIs before and just like with the IUD, as soon as I start taking SSRIs, I blow up and gain 50 pounds. And so I want to be very careful this time and proactive and weigh myself every week. I'm exercising more and I'm keeping track of things. And so I was looking for something that would help with my appetite because one thing that SSRIs can do, especially with people that have PCOS, is it can shut off your satiate, sat, satiety. It can make it so you don't feel satiated when you're eating. And so you're just gonna keep eating and eating and eating. And of course, the more you eat, the more calories you're eating and the fatter you're gonna get. So I started taking this a month and a half ago, maybe a month ago. And I noticed within the first week that my appetite had decreased by at least half. There isn't a lot of, now when you're on a low carb diet, you don't feel hungry a lot, but when the week before my period, I always get more hungry. Like that's just how it is. And I've noticed that overall, I'm not as hungry. This does not make my stomach feel gross and I'm super sensitive to that kind of thing. Uh, I am able to have my shake and then a couple hours later have something for lunch and then a couple hours later have dinner and then maybe like a little piece of dark chocolate or something, but I'm not feeling hungry. I think that this is the thing. So definitely try that out if you're on low carb or even if you're not and you're having a hard time with just feeling hungry all the time. And the other thing that I have is these Keto 2000 Drops. Also somebody I know sells a gosh, I can't think of what it's called. Privet, priv, privet maybe, um, like ketone drink mix. And so in my opinion, just go low carb. But when you go low carb and your body has burned off all those carbohydrates that you've eaten, your body starts burning your own fat for energy and it makes ketones in that process. And if you, you know, slip or if you're feeling a little hungry, and you don't wanna eat yet, you can take some of these ketones and it just ups your level of ketones. It's kind of an appetite suppressant kind of a feeling and you can look into it. You can look into it online and see the benefits of being in ketosis, benign dietary ketosis. Um, you know, I find that these are, are pretty fair in tiding me over a little bit. Or let's say you have a slip, if we, We'll have a cheat once a week. And if I have a cheat, after my cheat, I'll take these. It can't hurt, right? I have also two menstrual products. One thing that people with PCOS sometimes struggle with is just horrible, heavy, clotty, flooding periods. And, you know, where you can't leave the house or you have to have spare underwear and pants in the car and that kind of thing. And so probably a year ago, I found these. I don't usually wear tampons because I have such large clots that it's kind of pointless. It's just gonna, you know, so I found these uh, ultra tampons. And so these are gigantic. But what I find is if you're a very clotty bleeder, you're gonna have a clot come out and just go over top of the tampon, block the cotton, and then it's just gonna come around the sides. I've had that happen. But so this is an ultra tampon and I linked them down below and they do hold a lot more. I, when I'm bleeding really heavy, I can get like two and a half hours out of this. Whereas a super tampon, it may be like an hour and a half. So if you're at work and you're, you know, running around and you can't always just run right to the bathroom, this kind of buys you a little bit of time. And something else that I discovered, I would say within the last six months, I have tried, I was a big Kotex U pads, person. I don't like the dry weave usually gives me a reaction and the Kotex U pads, the ones that are ginormous, the overnight ones are very like cottony on the top and I like them, but when you're a clotty bleeder and a heavy bleeder and you have flooding, a lot of times that does not suck the blood in quick enough and it's squirting out the crack of your ass or squirting up the front. And it's just kind of a mess, especially if you're at work or you're in your car. Um, so I found these and these are the Always Infinifoam pads. 
and I had tried these a couple years ago and I did not like them and I don't know why I had gotten a sample or something. And so this is the, um, the, the size five. So it goes from, you know, the top of your pubic area all the way around to like the crack of your ass. So, you know, pay, place it back a little bit more. If you're a back bleeder and I am, you know, I'll have a gush and then all of a sudden I'll have a stain like up at the top of my underwear. I, you know, I mean, it's really annoying, but these are very thin and they're very absorbent and they come in a lot of different absorbencies and they keep you dry. So I'm very impressed with these and I have them in all different absorbencies so I can use them throughout my period, but I highly recommend the Always Infinifoam. I have a, a hair item. So a lot, of, a lot of people that have PCOS have issues with excess facial hair, dark, coarse facial hair. And before I found this item that I'm going to show you, so I'm gonna show you what my neck and everything look like now, my mustache area, my neck. Okay, I'm not wearing any makeup. Before I found this item, I could literally grow a full beard. It was so humiliating and embarrassing. I can't tell you the times that I went and got Estee Lauder. It was like double wear makeup. You know, I would put it on my whole face. I would put it on my whole neck because I would get hair here and I would wear a scarf anytime I could. I would wear a turtleneck, you know, anytime I could wear a hoodie and like go like this, or I would never wear my hair up. It would always be down and around my face. I went to a dermatologist and had IPL. I was on spironolactone, which is like a medication, hormonal medication that's supposed to decrease hair growth, did nothing. I went to once weekly, one hour sessions of electrolysis for over a year. I mean, it was thousands of dollars and it did nothing for me. And some of those things work for other people. My mom had PCOS and she had electrolysis and it worked for her. It did not work for me. And I went every single week for an hour and it was like hair by hair by hair. And so probably about five years ago, I saw a, a demonstration for the Tria laser and I purchased it for myself. It is linked below. I did not buy mine from Amazon, but this is what it is. You turn it on and there's different levels so see how it's flashing? The lock is flashing. Well, it's not flashing anymore. You have to take it on your skin to unlock it. So this is not gonna work for African-American skin, uh, but it will work for people who are fair skin. So I'm sorry, you know, I don't know. I'm sorry that it doesn't work for all skin levels, but it, definitely for people with lighter skin and darker hair. And that was my situation. I have light skin and you could see, I mean, the, the hairs underneath my skin, even after I shaved. So I'd have to shave every day. I had to wear concealer. I had to wear makeup and it was just, I just hated it. And you know, I, I felt that it was impacting my quality of life. I just, I was just so, so, so self-conscious about it. And so this laser, I'll show you how it works. So basically you turn it on, you unlock it, and there are different levels. So it's on five. So let's say you wanna do your, your neck. You just go like this. And it won't flash unless it sees a hair. So I have some like here and there, like here, I'm sure there's one over here. Okay, so you feel this tiny little burning and then it goes away. And so basically you're gonna do that to your entire, area you can use it on your arms and stuff too but you know i had i had hair like here my mustache which i still i don't like to do my mustache with the laser so i still have a couple of hairs there all through here really bad here really bad here and like right now i haven't taken care of my face in a couple days and i get like goat hairs like those little clear like wiry goat hair still because the laser doesn't do anything for hairs with no pigment in it I cannot say enough good things about this. It has changed my life. I've had pixie cuts since I've gotten this. I wear my hair up all the time since I've gotten this and I'm not hiding behind my sweatshirts. I don't wear makeup anymore except for lipstick because I, I felt like a prisoner. I felt like how much money am I spending on 
razors and makeup and and how you know if if I would go somewhere overnight or I was terrified we'd go on a trip and we'd get stranded because it was snowing what am I going to do I can't take care of my face you know it, it's just it impacted my life it impacted my relationships and it was just very it made me feel very self-conscious and so I highly recommend the Tria laser it is about $450 but it is going to save you if it works for you, it is it is life changing. So now I'm going to move on to some of the exercise things that I use. I got myself a spin bike last month, and I linked it down below. It's just, I don't need to really put a picture of it or show you because it's just a spin bike. It uh, I got a seat cover for it. I linked that down below. I think that's a must have. I I can't ride a regular bike because it hurts my ass. And this freaking cover is gel, and it's freaking amazing. So I started spinning on December thirtieth, and I've done it every single day since I got it, except for two days. I've taken two days off. I worked from like 20 minutes up until a couple days ago. I did an hour and a half. I usually do an hour a day. And so I also linked one of my favorite videos to watch because I love watching videos of riding a bike along the ocean in California. I live in Vermont. I've never been to the Pacific Ocean. And the first day that I did it, I did try a beginner spin class on YouTube and it was very frustrating for me. I have horrible hips. My knees get tired. You know, I, I had a C-section, my so my ab, like an up and down emergency C-section, so my ab muscles are shit. And I got very frustrated because I couldn't keep up. And you don't want to be frustrated when you're exercising. So I put on my earbuds. I have a spinning playlist on Spotify, which if I can figure out how to link that, I'll do that too. And I just watched this hour of riding a bike along the beach and just keep up to the beat of the music, you know, take breaks when I need to, take a sip of water and keep going. And I feel for my mental health, it has been a godsend. And I know I also, you know, a month ago started Zoloft, but I really think that just as much of the improvement in my mental health has been the exercise. I look forward to it. I'm looking forward to doing it after I'm doing this video. There are a couple items that I've started using since I've started exercising that I wanted to share with you. So one thing is with going low carb, you are definitely not getting enough potassium. So there are some things that you need to take supplements for that you're just not getting because you're not eating fruit and things. Um, but I use this supplement and it is a replenishing and rehydrating electrolyte powder and it has potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, and calcium in it. And I've just put this in my water bottle with a lemon and I drink it while I'm riding. And I also just recently discovered this Mio Sport, which this freaking like blue Gatorade guys with zero calories, electrolytes and B vitamins. It doesn't have any sugar alcohols in it. It didn't give me the shits or anything. Um, I'm going to link, I linked the bike my cover, the video that I like to watch, and all of these items. I hope that this was helpful for somebody. I know that figuring out that you have PCOS is really frustrating sometimes. My doctor never took me seriously, and I almost had to beg to get a full blood screen and get a referral to an endocrinologist. I'm grateful that as a nurse, I kind of knew certain things that made me look into other things, which kind of led me to managing my blood sugar with diet and being able to go off my blood sugar medications. And so I hope that this was helpful for somebody. And uh, if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.